This research covers the nuclear event in Japan of March 2011 and investigates the seriousness of the radiation leaked and how that affects residents in Japan and the rest of the world. The nuclear disaster at Fukushima Daiichi is a level 7 major accident on the International Atomic Energy Agency's International Nuclear and Radiological Event Scale. That's the highest possible rating of any nuclear event and Chernobyl was also a level 7 major accident. Firstly, let's declare some interests and loyalties. Number one, the nuclear power industry wants to appear as safe and competent as possible. Number two, mainstream media wants to report the most shocking and drawn out disaster to sell more papers and increase readership. Number three, government wants you to be uninformed and scared by anything nuclear because it makes the citizen feel small and powerless while making the big brother state appear to have all the answers. The radiation leaks of iodine-131, cesium-134 and cesium-137 amongst others from the multiple reactor units at Fukushima will render the immediate vicinity a dangerous radioactive zone for many years to come. In order to understand whether the radiation that reaches us is harmful or safe, we need to know what the established safe levels are. Now, under normal circumstances, when everything is working fine, the idea is that almost no radiation should be released into the environment from a functioning nuclear power plant. And the International Commission of Radiological Protection, which is an advisory body in the UK, allows one millisievert per year for public exposure. Just to put that into perspective, average background radiation from our environment, such as soil and cosmic rays, totals 2.2 millisieverts per year in the UK, 3 millisieverts annually in America and 6 millisieverts in Sweden. A long haul flight crew will get 9 millisieverts per year and all of these are safe. So in order to discover the line between what is safe and what is dangerous we need to look at the limits before harmful effects occur. 1000 millisieverts would give us a 5% chance of suffering a fatal cancer. 5,000 millisieverts would kill 50% of those receiving it within a month. 10,000 millisieverts would certainly kill the recipient within a few weeks. So the good news, if you're in Japan, is that even if you receive 1,000 millisieverts of radiation from Fukushima, you still have about a 95% chance of living a perfectly healthy life. For point of reference, workers dealing with radiation in the nuclear industry have annual limits to occupational exposure. These are 50 millisieverts in America and 20 millisieverts elsewhere. So how much radiation actually leaked from Fukushima? Well, reports from various sources put numerous leaks at different ranges, including 1 millisievert per hour up to 400 millisieverts per hour all the way to 1000 millisieverts per hour. This radiation will continue to be emitted until the workers can cool the radioactive materials and re-establish some kind of containment. This is very bad news for people in and very close to the facility. But what are the measurements further outside the plant? Well, at the main gate at 9am on 15th of March, the readings peaked at 11.9 millisieverts per hour. That is a huge reduction from what's going on in inside the buildings. 40 kilometers northwest of the nuclear plant, which is the direction the wind was blowing at the time, uh, readings on April the 17th show the absolute highest level remaining was found in the village of Aitate, reading 0 0.00493 millisieverts per hour. Also in the same location, which records the highest radiation of all surrounding areas in the Fukushima prefecture, Greenpeace on March the 27th recorded readings of up to 0 0.01 millisieverts per hour. Even taking the fiercely anti-nuclear Greenpeace's worst case figure, it would still take 4,167 days of that exposure to develop even a 5% chance of a fatal cancer meaning that 40 kilometers outside of the danger zone, although not an ideal place to buy a home in the next few years, the radiation is already so dispersed that the deadly levels seen inside the core of the reactors are reduced to minuscule readings which the unprotected human body can tolerate for many years. 
Readings from Tokyo report a reassuringly low 0.000481 millisieverts per hour on March the 18th, 2011, and at Yokohama, lower still with 0.000033 millisieverts per hour. Residents of Tokyo are safe because with such dispersed low levels now recorded, to even develop a 5% risk of fatal cancer from the Fukushima Daiichi disaster, one would have to live in Tokyo for 2,373 years, i.e. the Japanese residents have got more important things to worry about. So if Japan is recording safe levels nationally, and residents are not at risk beyond the danger zone, why is there so much hysteria in America and elsewhere in the world? Well, simply, this is what the mainstream media does. They will do anything to increase and retain an audience. And fear is a highly susceptible emotion for them to manipulate, regardless of whether the threat is real or imagined. So how can they misrepresent these facts which demonstrate that although the nuclear power plant is a major accident with a radioactive danger zone, Everywhere else in Japan is absolutely fine. Well, they talk in generalities. Most people don't know the difference between a micro sievert and a nano sievert, and the media exploit this. They make things sound apocalyptic when they are not. They don't report what has happened, rather preferring to suggest what might happen, with imaginative what-ifs and worst-case scenarios. Fukushima's nuclear power plant, a catastrophe Japan can't seem to control. And tests show new reasons to worry. Another irresponsible scare tactic is to talk in misleading multiples. So, for example, if background noise is 1 decibel and the safe limit is 85 decibels before hearing may be affected, if we turn on a washing machine at 75 decibels, the media will report that this is 75 times normal levels, shock horror, which appears really scary and an immediate threat to your health. But it's not. It's a washing machine operating well within safe levels. And that is the situation with radiation in Japan. It is higher than usual, but it is well within safe levels. So is this video some kind of pro-nuclear infomercial? Well, no. Japan's Fukushima Daiichi event could have been a lot worse. With over 14,000 nuclear fuel assemblies in this plant alone, the capacity for full-scale meltdown and truly catastrophic disaster is representative of the nuclear industry's hubris to build bigger and bigger plants, which equals higher tax costs and more private profits. Let us not forget that the Chernobyl disaster directly affected three countries, Ukraine, Belarus and Russia. It caused the evacuation of hundreds of thousands of people. It contaminated the air, the soil, the water and food crops. A dead zone around the site still exists today. Some residents even suffer genetic birth defects in their subsequent generations. So is nuclear power the solution or the problem? And if nuclear power does pose too much danger to us and the environment, what is the solution? I think the solution rests in the devolution of control shifting from big corporations and big government towards individual energy independence, where small-scale home technologies like wind, solar, geothermal, biomass and other suppressed energies are seized upon by forward-thinking people who realise big business and big government are never going to readily give away such freedoms. We must take them for ourselves.